Good morning. Today I thought I would just uh, talk a little bit about the three major styles of camping that people use their RVs for, or three major styles of RVing. The first one that most people, when they purchase an RV, get into is what we call the, the weekender camper or RVer. That's the person that purchases an RV um, and they either keep it at their house or they keep it in a storage unit until they go away for the weekend or for vacation. We use our fifth wheel right now as a weekend campers, usually from April or May through October. And we do weekend camping, trying to go away one weekend a month just to get away from our duties at the house and get out of town, relax. Sometimes we'll go places that we need to, that we want to go and see things. Like last year when we went down to Coshocton, Ohio to visit the historic part of the, the town down there, Roscoe Village. Then there's uh, other times, like last August, when we took it on vacation for a whole week, and we went to a couple state parks, and then went out to Wapakoneta, Ohio, to visit the Neil Armstrong Air and Space Museum. The thing about weekend camping is that you pack up a few days before, you travel to your destination for say Friday after work or Friday during the day if you take off work, and then you stay the weekend and usually you leave Sunday around anywhere between 11 and 1 o'clock depending on what checkout time is at the campgrounds and you come home and park your RV unload the RV and then go back to work for the for the upcoming week weekend camping is more of a de-stress for those that are working their nor a normal job and living in their sticks and bricks house. Like I said, it's just a way to get away and relax or some people get away and take their kayaks or bikes or something and go, you know, or go do hiking and stuff. Some people keep a little bit busier than others. Other people go and just sit around the campgrounds and relax and read. Most of the time when you weekend, when we, when we weekend camp, we are either staying at state parks or at private campgrounds. But there are some that set up their RVs for boondocking, take a generator with them, and depending on what area of the country you live in, you can get out and stay off the grid and dry camp. The second style of RVing is called is seasonal and that's where you will rent out a lot at a private campgrounds you pay them say seventeen hundred twenty five hundred dollars for the year and you get to park your RV there a lot of seasonal people put decks around their RV uh, they might keep bikes out there they'll haul a, pi a pile of firewood out there they might keep a lawnmower and a weed eater out there because when you're seasonal, you got to take care of the grass, typically. You got to take care of the grass and your property. So usually you take a lawnmower out either from home or you go and purchase a, a secondhand lawnmower, say at a garage sale or something, to be able to, take, to keep the grass mowed. The other thing about seasonal is they charge you for your electric usage. When we did seasonal for about three years, it was about, 
I think $60 a month we paid for our electric because of, especially in the hot season when we were running the air conditioner. What's nice about seasonal is that you can come and go as you want. There's no check-in time, check-out time. In the hot Northeast Ohio here, seasonal is usually mid-April through about the end of October because of the water lines freezing and stuff. They don't stay open year-round normally. So when we talk a seasonal site, you're talking that time span. Now down south, see, you could probably you get a seasonal site or permanent site. They may call it permanent down there, and you could be there year-round. But there, tip. what's nice about seasonal is you find the campgrounds that you like, and you get a lot, and you pay for it, and you can go out there every weekend and spend. You can go out, and you don't have to leave at checkout time on Sunday, so the campground gets a little quieter. There's not as much traffic when the, after the weekenders leave. A lot of seasonal people will stay till after dinner on Sunday and then go home if they're going to stay at home during the week. Other seasonal people, they go out there, and they'll live out there all summer and just go home and check on things occasionally. We've seen some young families that they'll get a seasonal site with a travel trailer and the mom and the kids stay out there and the kids swim every day and ride bikes every day and play at the playground and dad goes to work and comes back there every evening, you know. So seasonal is another way of using your RV. When you seasonal, you actually get more use out of your RV than when you're a weekend RVer because you can go out and, and stay in it a whole, a whole lot more and it's cheaper than paying by the weekend. And you don't have to haul it someplace and you don't have to store it at your house or a storage unit. Typically, a seasonal site is more like a permanent site. You can use, if, you, if you're playing on seasonal the next year, when the season opens, you could pay, say, $50 or $100, and you can leave your camper on site through the winter. You just got, got to get it winterized, and then you can leave it at that site through the winter, and you don't have to take it off site. Now, the last thing about seasonal camping that I want to mention is you don't necessarily have to have a tow vehicle if you would get a travel trailer or a fifth wheel. If all you're going to do is purchase it and park it at a seasonal site, very often you can get the dealer or find someone to transport it to the campgrounds for you and put it on the lot. And park it for you and then you can get it set up and you don't have have to have your own tow vehicle if you're not going to take it off that lot to go away with it sometime during the summer. And so that could be uh, that could be something that you might be interested in if you want to do camping, you want to do it in an RV, but you don't have a truck or don't want to go the expense of buying a truck that can pull it, then you could do you could RV uh, your lifestyle could be seasonal where you have someone else just park it for you and then you go out and use it but it stays there all the time and you pay for that lot. Now the third type of RV lifestyle is called full timing and there's over a million people in the United States that live in their RV full time. They've sold off their sticks and bricks house, they don't have one to go back to, they downsize and get rid of anything that they can't take with them because they got to watch their storage capacity is a lot is a lot less and they got to watch their weight on their rig also full timing is when you live full time in your RV traveling around there are some full timers that have an RV at a campsite say up here in Ohio and then they travel to a campgrounds down in Florida. Some full-timers have an RV 
that they leave at a campsite seasonal up in Ohio and then they might have another trailer down in Florida at a campgrounds that they pay for a seasonal site and they come up in the summer to Ohio and they can drive up here and not have to have a tow vehicle but they can come up here in a car or uh, a van or an SUV by throwing all their clothes and stuff in it and come up to stay in the camper up here and then when it starts getting winter up here they go down to Florida and stay in the camper they have in Florida and transport it and they but the majority of full-time RVers are traveling around the country seeing the United States and the different sites some of them go up to Alaska for the whole summer traveling around uh, in the winter time Florida Texas Alabama the southern states are popular for full-timers they they try to go keep going where the weather is warmer and stay away from the snowy wintry cold states now there are a few full-timers that might like skiing or snowboarding and they'll go to Colorado or something for the winter but the majority of full-timers go to down to Arizona, New Mexico, Texas. There's a town down in Arizona called Quartzsite that a lot of full-timers go to in the wintertime. And they live off, off the grid, dry camping, most of them. And that town swells to thousands, hundreds of thousands of RVers in the winter. And they go down there in the dry in the dry cooler time of the year and then in the summer when the northern states start to warm up everybody starts migrating to the north but as a full-timer you've got people that are retired and they've got a pension and social security and they live off of that and just travel around and see the sites and then there's others and that their families or they're close to retirement they could be their 30s 40s 50s even going into 60 they don't have enough saved up so they work on the road they you can they can do work camping jobs where they work as a camp host and they get their site provided for free through the summer months and then they might find another campground in the winter down south they camp host or they could be a, a camp host at and work at a campgrounds and they get their site for free in the winter time and that's a way for them to save money there's others that travel around the shows and can work uh, selling products some people now with the internet being faster and um, and cell phone capability there's people that have their own businesses on the road that they run from a laptop in their cell phone while they're traveling around living in their RV so the third lifestyle of RVing is full timing not everybody that's full timing is rich and living off of an inheritance or living off of their retirement all the time but these people you know you can you can go and you can stay for two or three days or up to a week you know, or some people stay for a month at a campgrounds because if you stay a month at a campgrounds, the rate's cheaper than if you just stay for a week per day and it saves them money. So those are the three types of RVing, major RVing lifestyles out there that when people purchase an RV, they are either thinking about being a weekender, weekend camping, vacation camping or they may be thinking about well there's this campground near there and it'd be nice to you go camping and get away from the house maybe we'll just buy an RV and we'll seasonal and they're a seasonal RVer and then there are those people that just they're like you know what we want to see more of the United States we haven't gotten a chance to do that let's just let's just sell our all our stuff and sell off our sticks and bricks home and let's buy an RV and let's live in it full time and travel around slowly seeing everything not getting in a hurry and taking our time and just live in the RV and downsize 
Kind of like the tiny home movement, except for you're moving around often. So my question to you as a viewer is, what is your RVing lifestyle? My wife and me, we started out with the weekend camping. We did a tent, went to a pop-up, and then we decided we were going to seasonal. We didn't want a seasonal and a pop-up. So then we went and did, we bought a travel, used travel trailer, and we seasonal camped for several years. And so we've, we're at the point now where we're weekend campers. Our goal is to eventually be full timers. So thank you for watching this video. Let us know in the comments below what type of RV lifestyle you are currently doing and possibly if your RV lifestyle may be going to change down the road in a little bit. And if you haven't, don't own an RV but you're watching the video, be sure to uh, put in the comment below what kind of RV lifestyle you're thinking of doing when you purchase an RV.